Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. How is everyone doing? I'm good. Hello. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Got another blog post out, so that always feels good. All right. Nice job. What's news? I see the very warm here in horses. Minnesota. Warm in Minnesota. I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit in the summer. I just moved away from Minnesota about a year ago. What part of Minnesota are you in? In the Twin Cities area. Oh, okay. Yeah. I moved to uh... suburb. Yeah, I lived there for I guess 15 years. I just moved moved to DC from there about a year ago. Gotcha. I was there for seven years and moved uh, last year. Ah. I went to college in Duluth, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. A little colder up there. How's the weather in Australia? Uh, not very good today. First time in a while. It's, yeah, really not very good. <laughs> Is it uh, raining? See, though? Is it raining? It's raining. Raining, it's windy. So, I guess that's fine. I saw that it looks like the course is coming along in terms of getting it ready. Yeah, it's like mildly terrifying, you know. It's like good to have things finished, but then it's like, oh, you know, what if people hate it? <laughs> so hopefully people don't hate it were those pictures all dolly 2 generated uh-huh yeah you should try did you try with dolly mini instead no because i i thought it, it might be more interesting because a lot of you know that was developed by a lot of fast ai people right so that it could be could yeah. be interesting to yeah it was that. but it's also like much less trained so it's not normally very good i mean i mean it's good for what it is but yeah because i think one of the things it depends on the i guess the sort of what your prompt and stuff because some people sure. say like it you know especially with like i guess more pop culture and stuff dolly mini is better because yeah dolly 2 they filter all that stuff out so mm, that's interesting yeah yeah so no, a lot really, of people like, i didn't spend time on it honestly i was just like oh it'd be fun to throw in some <laughs> examples yeah oh just a moment i've got a message all right Players teacher is six, so I'm hopefully you will be okay. Any uh APL news? Just checking Some the of you might have seen it, but I posted a kind of a statistics blog post in APL on the forum a little bit ago. We were just talking about that a little bit. It's very interesting going through that. Tell us about it, Isaac. Yeah, so um, this was calculating some simple statistics, confidence intervals, and p-values through um, through bootstrapping. Um, I've got a little monologue on why. For those like who don't know what bootstrapping is, do you want to mention what that is? Yeah, so there's kind of a couple of ways you can calculate most statistics. Um, kind of the, the classical um, statistical formulas that I think most people are, are, are more familiar with as, you know, you, um, you have a formula that can calculate a p-value and you have um, 
kind of assumptions baked in. Like you're going to assume the normal distribution. And if these assumptions are true, you can calculate your value. Um, bootstrapping um, does a little bit of a different approach. Instead of kind of approximating the statistic by kind of assuming normal distribution, um, it says, well, we're just going to randomly sample over and over and over again. So rather than um, creating a kind of an artificial sampling distribution based on what we believe the distribution to be, we'll just create it by randomly sampling a thousand times. Um, and so, so there's less assumptions baked in. And then you know, if you calculate a confidence interval, you can say a confidence interval on the mean. Um, you can sample it a thousand times, get the mean of all these small samples. Um, and if you want a 90% confidence interval, you just chop the lowest 5% off, chop the highest 5% off, and 90% of the time, your data will fall in those in those bounds. And you know that's the case because, because you did it a thousand times and you looked at where 90% of them fell. Um, so it's kind of a, um, a more elementary, I, I think more flexible, um, flexible approach that kind of gets the, the same answer. Yeah, so, um, you know, when I used to do consulting 25, 30 years ago, this was my, one of my two big tricks um, was to use this kind of sampling all the time for creating simulations. I basically almost never used assumed distributions, um, but yeah, I would always basically get some real data and then randomly pick from a column um, that, yeah, made life a lot easier and generally made things more accurate. Well, and I think it's- What was um, the other trick? My the other big real... trick was using pivot tables all the time. Mm. <laughs> Back when pivot tables had just come out, it blew people's minds. Nice. Like they, still, they still blow people's minds, by the way, but- <laughs> They do. <laughs> 25 years ago, it particularly still blows so. people's minds. It's a- uh... A little less, a uh, little more surprising. It blows people's minds today, I guess. But yeah, and so you know, I think the biggest value for me in this in this bootstrapping is um, you can kind of think and reason, and it's very intuitive, right? Like, where will ninety percent of my data points fall? Well, I don't know. Let me try it a thousand times and see where ninety percent of my data points did fall. Um, if you want to do, you know, a statistic, a hypothesis test, you can. Um, sample it a bunch of times and see how many values how many how many values were more extreme than what you saw and you can you can actually sample it and look and the nice thing about that is you know you can compare your means but it's very easy to say um, not just let me validate that the means are different but eventually um, you want to actually say let me validate can I validate to see if the means are different by a certain amount? So you can start to do statistical tests on magnitude because just because two things are different doesn't mean it's it means anything. Mm. Normally there's an amount it has to be different before it matters. Mm. And and you can and kind I, of my daughter wants me. You can keep talking. So at these, when you sample it, I, I feel it's it's just um it's a way of, of doing it just based on kind of intuition and experimentation. Um, that I find is is just a lot easier to to work with and customize and understand what's going on, and you don't have to be as careful about what assumptions you're making versus not making. Um, so, so Isaac, have you used that a lot? I'm sorry, you might have said that. I I, I was I, I might not no. have been might not have heard it. Yeah, I pretty much exclusively use use bootstrapping. I don't really see I mean I, I think the the situations where I wouldn't would be um if I'm you know completely certain of what the, the assumptions of a given formula are and completely certain my data set fits those. Um sure. and and bootstrapping for whatever reason is is not feasible like if i if i really needed to calculate a statistic on some enormous ginormous data set then then maybe mm -hmm. um but these formulas are really just 
kind of shortcuts. They're not, they're not different. Yep. They're not giving different values. They're just um, a way to do it, you know, more computationally efficient. And so when I'm kind of just testing and developing things, I'd rather have something that I can think about and, and, and is a little bit more intuitive. Um, but I mean, I don't really need to, I mean, this, these, these, drawing a random sample is, is usually not you know computationally prohibitive so i can usually just just do it on my laptop and it's it's not a big deal so i almost never yeah. use the traditional formulas um let not say never but well, bootstrapping is yeah. my default what well, if, if you can say what are the applications that you well, like just a handful of what or like one or two of what you've used it on yeah, I mean, I mean, like really, any, of, I mean, what what's the data from? Uh, pretty much anything you would do any normal statistical test or confidence interval on. So, you know, you you've got some data and you run uh, maybe you're doing an A-B right. test. You have a control group and you're testing, sending fewer emails to another group and you want to know, um, did it have an impact on revenue or their level of engagement or whatever? Let me do a gotcha. hypothesis okay. there. Um, Sure. I used it a lot for simulations. So it would be like, you know, in consulting, yep. it'd be like, okay, what's the possible outcomes for this company under different scenarios? And you would need to make a bunch of assumptions about what might happen. And generally it's not sure. a good idea to do a point assumption because you don't know. So then, you know, the normal thing might be to say, oh, well, let's assume it's a, you know, standard deviation around our assumption of whatever. Right. But I'd kind of often like to find him some historical data of like past results or something like that. And then basically sure. just do a random lookup into that list of values. Yep. There's a really great um, introductory statistics book um, that is a bootstrap first approach. Um, I'll put that in the chat if anyone is interested. Yeah, that'd be um, great. Thank you. It's not APL, but it's a, I think it, um, it teaches things in a, in a really intuitive and, and useful way. And it covers things like um, just because something is statistically significant doesn't mean it's practically significant, which I think is something that's sometimes missed in statistics, right? Um, Feels like remembering the author names won't be too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a freak mm -hmm. family of... Uh, I think like four of them have PhDs in statistics, um, but it's um, yeah, it, it's it's interesting. Gotcha. Thank you. I haven't seen this before. Add cart. <laughs> oh my god, one hundred and twelve dollars. What is it about books? No. It, wait, the ebooks one hundred and twelve dollars, or the print books forty eight dollars. That's interesting. Oh, that's a rental of the book. Well, the rental. Yeah, it's. Oh. God, I hate textbooks. And what's this? Yeah. Online access for $10. You need the $30 Dover edition. <laughs> the what? $30? I'm sorry? What did you say? The well, thing? you know, Dover, uh -huh. Dover Publications, they, they, they'll they have these kind of pseudo textbooks. Uh -huh. So I have a buddy that I went to college with. He's a physics professor over here in the States. And he was trying to find um, a Dover publication on physics that he could use for one of his classes because the books only cost like $30. You know, there it's a, it's a, um, it's not hardbound, but it's a, it's an actual physical text or physical book. Uh -huh. But unfortunately, a lot of them, you know, for at least he was saying for the stuff he was looking at, they left out too much detail because, um, you know, they're they're usually or at least the ones I've seen are, you know, in that kind of standard 200 to 220 page realm. But so that that's what I was referencing. I see. But Dover Publications has a lot of um technical books um uh, maybe i'll find their you know their their website and put it on the thing um 
and and some of the books are really good. It's just that some of the detail isn't in there. Hmm. The Kindle version is forty seven dollars. That's weird. Is that is that just Student Solutions or or? Oh, was it? Oh, the it's Solutions yeah. Manual. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right. Hardcover three hundred and sixty two dollars. <laughs> uh i don't know yeah it was more than i wanted but my work paid for it so i didn't put on them feel bad for it feel bad about it it's not if it's wasting somebody else's money i'm more okay with it <laughs> but um maybe you can find a used copy yeah didn't seem to be one on amazon but um I hope Molly's able to join because it sounded like she was going to try and actually do some prep for today's chat. She was asking what we're going to cover. And Serata, whereabouts did you list these things? Was that in a previous session or something? Uh, no, it's in the uh, how to write a really short um, APL code. Oh, yeah, okay. different one. Okay, so tell us about this uh, APL problem solving competition. Uh, actually, I hear from your interview in Awakecast, mm. and Adam mentioned it at the end. So I just jump in and have a look. Um, so, and under the face one, the left hand side. Oh, left hand side. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So they actually give you some very um, easy to start with a uh, sample and then have the platform for you to um, do, uh, do it. And I find it quite easy to use um, some of the, I, I have experience in, in the past in Python, some of them I just even don't know how to do the submission, but uh, they are very good explanation. And I think I've been hooked is because of the two um, questions. Um, they actually using the APL and then solving the life science problem. They actually how to count the um, the different of the DNA and the mutation. So, and the second solution actually really really short. And I really impressed by by the by what they can do. Oh, cool! So you can actually submit your function and yeah, test it here. Yeah, and then it has some edge case, so that's why I start digging into the documentation and find out um, it's slightly different. I need to do that uh, little diamond thing in, in it, but yeah. And they cover quite a wide range of the of the problem as well, so you can click through. Yeah, that, that is a bit more a multi-line question, so uh, maybe in the future we can you can cover it here. Yeah, and I think um, I think Felix was telling me that a lot of the phase one questions are, are pretty approachable. Um, mm -hmm. So just for me, it's a small uh, exercise. I when I learned Python, I remember I tried to find different um, problem and just try to understand the description, how to do it. So yeah, just kind of fun, and they give us some hints on what. Um, solution or symbol we should use and then just start looking at it as well but uh, as APO documentation sometimes can be quite hard to understand so yeah you can cover it that would be great mm. and the mutation actually they point you to the Hamming distance actually very interesting when I learning how to write APL and then I also learning other knowledge as well so yeah just found very interesting yeah, I mean, this one seems trivially easy, right? Yeah. It's just... Um... But I think that the, for me, it's very inspiring is the, the application. This one's just this, isn't it? Hey, don't sorry here. <laughs> You're not supposed to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, presumably phase one is not. <laughs> I think there is some prize money associated with phase one. Oh, you know what it is, though? It's plus slash applied to each side. Um, so you've got to do equals on the two sides. It'd be, it's interesting, actually, to think about how to do this really neatly, right? Because you've got to mm. have 
uh, I mean, you can obviously do it with a DFUN, um, but to do it directly, and I um, oh, I guess it's like yeah, plus slash applied to that um, uh, that uh, this one. So that would be that would give you that. No, okay, so that would give you, um, it's a slightly different case to any of the binds I remember seeing. You want the, the this to be the dyadic one, and then you want to post-process it with plus slash. Is there a way to do that? Yep, so that's why you need to think about it. <laughs> And um, yeah, they also in the example stage, they they tell you that as different method um, in in APL can do it and just see how they actually quite explicit to 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 operate actually re really, really amazing. And I saw in the last year competition, they actually compare different solution and they actually can run the performance to compare different, um, not just the length of the uh, solution, but also the processing time. It's this one. You want X equals Y and then post-process with plus equals. So you want, this is your post-processing and this is your dyadic pre-processing. Is there a way to um, like run some examples and see what happens or do you have yeah. to do this? Uh, because your answer is not correct, that's why. Right. Yeah, I was, hoping to <laughs> see what it, I was hoping to see what it does give. Uh, actually, the example is all your test case. I see. Yeah. Let's try it. So you just need to do your function yet. Okay, F equals plus slash And uh, what's this button? J. Apply to equals. And it's not that, it's this. Okay. That's interesting. It hasn't it hasn't you, added I it up. Are you are you trying to put F? Oh, I'm not going to say equals. I should say F. Sorry. Ten. And is it saying that was wrong? Result should have been seven with that and that. Oh wait, the number of differences. That's why. So it's um. It's the. Um, it's the opposite of that. And I believe not is tilde. I think I saw that on yeah. the news. It is. So, um, that's the post-processing. There you go. Mm -hmm. And would you need the parentheses? I'm not sure. Without the parentheses, it still works. That's interesting. Now, why does it still work? So that's the operator. That's the right-hand side. That's the, oh, I see. That's the left-hand side. And then that's what is applied to the whole thing. So does it think that's correct? Test. 
Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but my solution is only five. So one, one letter is more shorter than you. One, two, <laughs> three, four, five. Mine's five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Nice. And and they for the for them they have the pass they have a silver trophy for you or a gold co uh, trophy for you silver just pass part of the test case and the gold actually you pass all the case. And so this is gold. Yeah. I see. I think it said you have to log in for you to save your correct answer if you. Oh, good point. All right. Competition, you can but... you can submit now and then you can put the trophy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I just found it very fun and easy and I can learn and practice. That's great. So, All right. So, so your list of things were the things that they were saying would be needed. Okay. So we've done this one. Mm -hmm. So let's do these ones. And this competition's called 2022 APO. Okay, so let's create a section. Um, Okay, so should we just go in order? Yeah. Oops. This is called key. I feel like I've heard people talk about key a few times. And um, what is the glyph called? Who can see it? This one. Is it under primitive operators? Yeah. Quad equal. Okay. Quad equal. And it's spelt here. K. It's a monadic operator. I really wish this bookmark would gave the whole hover over that the dialogue editor gave you, but oh well. Sorry, what's that? I said I really wish this uh bookmarklet gave you the full hover over that hover uh, effect that the oh, uh, editor beautiful. gave with everything but it'd be easy enough to fork it and add that i guess yeah, that's true yeah maybe somebody can give that a go that's oh, a shame they're not using a nice font in here um oh and we should add our um uh boxing style equals max Oh, boxing on style equals max. Also, oh, dash style equals max. Okay. Okay. Means key. It's okay. So the left hand side's optional. So we need to look out for that. And we've got to give it a dyadic function. applies the function to each unique key in X and the major cells. Okay, but well maybe the best way to look at this is to look at that competition because it had an example. I think it's okay if we look at how to do some of the phase one stuff together, um, if that sounds reasonable. Yeah, I can uh, say it's okay, we, we just walk through. Uh, oh, don't press that button. Um, 
So write argument that's a character vector representing a DNA string, and we want to count each symbol. So, um, all right, so maybe we should start with like banana and count each symbol, banana. Okay. Um, why is a function to each unique key in X and the major cells of Y having that key? Um, I see, and here they've got a function which is just inserting colon between things. Um, each unique key in the major cell of Y having that key. So if we did like, um, let me know if anybody's got a thought about what we could try this for. This is shift K. Um, A. Um, I don't know. What if we just did like comma? Um, A. Rank error. Okay. Why is the function? Key similar to group by. Maybe we should try their example. So this banana example might be an even simpler one than that one potentially. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll put it in the chat. I guess it's basically the same thing, but okay, it'd be easier to cool. Easier to see what the mapping's doing. So what is it doing, Isaac? So the B of banana goes with the three. Why is the A appearing with one, one, nine? Oh, it's selecting from like where the A's are, it's selecting these. Oh, and then where the N's are, it's selecting those. Wait, is that right? Banana, no. B, A, N. A, N, oh yeah, oh, I see. These are the positions of, uh, oh, it's kind of slightly backwards to what I expect. Um, there's three A's. Oh, and they're in, maybe it would be easier actually if we did, um, uh, uh, whoops, I six, I had a six. There's the positions of them. Uh, which means, can we just say comma? Yes. A comma 
two, four, six. Yeah, that just concatenates things. And it's a bit like root by. Let's set another example that shows actually applying a function other than kind of a custom function in there as well that I think is another functionality we might want to show. Okay. Um, though the I in mine is not an iota, so it should be. I see. Oh, I see. So we um, basically are saying you. like this is column one and this is column two and you find all the unique things that are in column one and then you find their corresponding things in column two and do something to them. And what if it's monadic? I think it will pass the iota six on both sides of it and treat it as di or it'll I think the iota six will be alpha and omega. Here you go. I think. If it's monadic, it just does the results. Gotcha. I thought you meant only something on the right side of the quad equals, like no A, no left side. So like, um, I wonder how you can do this without the defunds. Um, I don't know. No. Nope. So in that uh, cell 22, where you have the A with the plus thumb, I mean, you can also remove the A yeah. from the left, or not the alpha, oh, remove the, the A? A that holds. You can remove that and it'll pass that, um, that iota six is both alpha and omega to that function. Okay, so that's not gonna be very interesting, presumably. Um, Ah, what's that doing? So that is, I guess B is the first slot, A is second and fourth, but where is, okay. So I guess that just gave you the index locations for each character. The key operator applies the function to each unique key. Oh, here we are. Uh, it's the same as, this but we haven't done this yet have we maybe we should do that because it actually comes up quite a lot so let's just step back for a moment and put it underneath this Presumably the dyadic form of this is not match. It is, so that's easy. But we want the monadic version. So this is... Um, mm -hmm. Double quote, I wouldn't have guessed that. Okay. 
Okay, dyadic is not match. So I can just move this. Copy that for match, I guess. Oh, we don't have anything for match. Oh, we haven't done equal underbar yet either. All right. Okay. So. Okay. This one should be pretty easy. So this, um, that's interesting. Now, why are these different? Oh, I guess I'm confused. They look the same. And so not Oh, because they do match. Yeah, false. of course. Sorry. So yeah. So not match is false. Right. <laughs> Fine. Um, I wish they had the simplest possible examples first. One doesn't match one is false. One doesn't match zero is true. Okay, now the point though is that it doesn't kind of like normally equals or not equals is element wise. So this would broadcast over this and the answer would be zero, zero because one, it's not true that it doesn't match one. But this version with the extra line in it checks whether the ranks are the same. So it's operating on the whole thing, um, which presumably there might be one, some way to get that using the rank operator and not equals. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. So not equals is eight. So yeah, so my point is that normally, well, let's just use equals, right? Just an example. So one is equal to one and one is equal to one. Or we could do it like this. Um, and then I'm wondering, is there some way, rank operator, was it this one? Over, rank, okay, shift J. Um, is there some way to say, okay, we want to take the, um, left hand side is a scalar and the right hand side is a vector. Nope. Hmm. Okay, I guess I don't know how to do that then. Um, okay, anyway, so I guess I think this is clear enough. And so we could copy that up to match, which is colon. Okay. Okay. Monadic. Uh, so interestingly, I think the um, I think the uh, rank operator you have to put in parentheses because otherwise it interprets that right scalar as part of the vector on the right. At least doing that at least gets it not to error. Um, it didn't give me a useful answer, but it got closer. Well, I didn't get an error. I got one, one. 
which is this is, yeah this is oh one. gosh okay zero one i was trying to get a single result to say this is not equal to this this whole thing is not equal to this whole thing oh using just the single equals okay i mm. misunderstood yeah i was trying to get that to be the same as the That's match enough. command i wonder do they say whether it's uh some equivalent match doesn't doesn't mention it all right okay so tally is how you get counts i've come across this before And the mnemonic I heard on Arraycast for our remembering that this is how you get counts is imagine rotating it by 90 degrees. It looks like tallying stuff on a whiteboard or a chalkboard or whatever. Um, so tally. So that should be. That's three, got three things on it. What about tallying up a matrix? Okay, it's the number of major cells. There are two rows in a matrix. Yeah, so imagine rotating that by 90 degrees. It looks like you're tallying something. There we go. Yeah, number of major cells. Great. Ah, that's interesting. It points out that row V is a one element vector, where else tally V is the same thing, but it's a scalar. Minor difference. Might be worth pointing that out. Like so. Okay. And then depth. is the how much nesting there is i guess so this is a array of arrays so its depth is two this is an array so its depth is one this is a scalar so its depth is zero and in the case where they are the con where it's not always two then it makes it negative. Okay, so if all the items are scalars, it's a simple array, it has a depth of one, a scalar depth of zero. And if they're not all scalars, it's nested. Uniform depth if all its items are the same depth. Okay, and it's not doing for uniform depth, it's negative. Okay. I don't know what quad ML is. So okay, so I guess that's hopefully gets us back to where we were, which I don't remember what that is. Um, oh, we were doing quad equal, and I guess that mentioned uh, here. Okay, so that is the number of elements in Y.
Okay, so iota of that. Yeah, okay, that's exactly what we just saw. So this is this is iota of the number of elements of A. Yes. Uh, iota six is iota of the number of elements of A. So that's the same as iota of tally of A. And that's why these two are the same. Cool. Um, did we want to have a go at trying to do this thing? Anybody have any ideas? Um, so uh, to jump back, I, I just looked at what that quad ML does. Um, okay. Kind of cool. Kind of don't think I'll ever use it. Okay. But I guess it's, um, different versions of APL define partitions differently, particularly when you're doing like partitioned enclosures and stuff like that. And apparently you can change which definition you're using. Sorry, what do you mean by partition? Set that variable. What does partition mean in this case? Uh, like uh, the um, uh, the backtick Z or backtick capital Z. Um, it's the little C. I think it's the called. Oh, left okay. Shoe. We haven't learned that yet. Yeah. Left shoe under bar. So it. All right. I guess. I guess we'll come back to that. Then we look at that glyph. Then. Um. Okay, so if we did this quaddy thingy, what's it called? Quad equal, uh, which is key. That tells us the locations of each of these things. And what did it ask us? The counts. Oh, okay. So would that just be tally? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, why didn't that work? So do we need to have a function and apply tally only to the omega argument? or yeah was that. it doing something was it like doing it dyadically or something like uh so key oh it's a dyadic function right 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 it's a dyadic function so we want a way to say we want to use it monadically which obviously we can do in a rather ugly way um, by doing it like this. So we need the tally to apply to the omega, but not the alpha, right? Um, uh, that's still wrong. Are you trying to do tally? Isn't that tally, isn't the tally the one with the Oh yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Just the other one. Thanks. Right. And then, okay. thank you, Tanish. Okay. Um, is there a better way to say we want the monadic version? Did you come across a shorter answer to this, Serata, or did you have something like this? We can't hear you, you're muted. I think I have a longer version. Ah, okay. Uh, let's see if it works. Well, this is an interesting, um, yeah, uh, thing maybe to see if anybody can figure out is how to do this without the defunds, because it seems, Seems like it should be unnecessary. Okay, this 20, 12, 17, 21. 20, oh, oh, it's gotta be in a particular order. Right, right, right. 
which I think is easily fixed by telling it what order we want it in. Um, is that true? So we want it for A, G, C, T. A, C, G, T. A, C, G, T. A, C, G, T. Um, is that? Um, that's not quite how it works, is it? It's going to it's going to go through each of the unique things on the left. And the right hand side is uh, Yeah, it, the problem has been entered in that order, right? That's why I actually quite long my answer. Mm. So actually, I mean, it really, really make you think about how to how, how to approach the problem. Then I think achieve the um, mm -hmm. the purpose. Uh, how to use the the patient as a, as a tool of thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've got a bad solution. If we do both arguments, we could use that rank up and rank down the I don't know the Christmas tree looking ones. Oh, to sort okay. it and mm -hmm. then just select the last column of that. Um, we, haven't, we haven't actually used those yet, but yeah, okay. There should be an easier way, I would think. Um, all right, well, we can get it in the wrong order. Um, fine. And so the particular order that's going to be in is going to be A, G, C, T. And the order we want is, wait, we want, we want is A, C, G, T. Oh, A, G, C, T. Slightly wrong. I guess we could sort that list before we send it in. So if we did. Oh, because that's. That's just sorted. Yeah, so we could just sort that. That's true. Um, and right. the way we sort things, it's like a grade thing, right? Yeah, it's to the left of Iota. Uh, it looks like a Christmas tree. Yeah, there. Oh, I see. This is how you sort things, is it? Yeah, now it returns the index locations that you should, you have to index in. It doesn't actually sort the list it uh, returns mm. the and so then you need to use the uh the squash quad to get back to the correct values so it's not um is there something like Aha, uh -huh. this is, um, this only vaguely rings a bell, but when we did IOTA, dyadic, yeah, tells you index of, um, so, this is the location of each of these things. I don't know if that helps. Um, so, I mean, I guess what would we do with this? We could somehow get a sum by each unique number and then use the quad equals to pair that up with a CGT. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, kind of making stuff up. I don't know if that'll work, but. That's 
that's the order we want it. Hmm. All right. Well, I might leave it for now. I think it's an interesting question again to think about. I mean, that's the, that's why we're trying to do all the glyphs. Is that until you know all the glyphs, we don't have the yeah the raw stuff we want. Um, Wait, can't we just so, sort the? the yeah, go on. Sorry, um, Tanish. Why can't we just sort the array and then and then do it on the sorted array? We can. Um, we just haven't learned the glyphs to sort with yet. Oh, okay, okay. Mm. Yeah. They suggest using outer product. Well, maybe that's worth thinking about too. Um, so out of product. Um, so we would have AGCT down the left. And so if we did like out of product of, oh, I can see how they're gonna do that. So out of product is, jot dot so if i do jot dot comma right there's that okay. so if, if instead i use equals there's that right There's that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, now, uh, again, it'd be nice to do this tacitly, but I don't know how. So um, this is going to be a C G T, and then we're going to have the thing that they're passing in. When you say it'd be nice to do it tacitly, do you do you know of any reason why the tacit stuff is, you know, better? It's, um, okay, so that's the whole, like, that's like asking, is wildcard import in Python better? That's like a can of worms. <laughs> um, yeah, I asked that on the APL Discord, I, I realized. Oh, there you go. Okay. Not a helpful question for me no, to ask, but I was hoping like, I could get a... A better answer here. Hello, Americans. What do you guys think of gun control? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was about the reaction I got. Yeah. Okay. So there was a you know earlier raycast with Henry Rich, who's the guy who mainly implements or almost entirely implements J nowadays, and he said he basically never, or not never, but he very rarely uses tacit programming. The tacit meaning without the curly braces and omegas and whatnot. Um, um, so, you know, that's one point of view. <clears throat> Aaron Hsu, who is the creator of CodeDefunds, the GPL compiler written in slash for APL, uses a lot of tacit programming. Um, so Henry Rich's view was like, oh, it's too hard and it gets just too complicated. And so I, I don't want to do that. Or else Aaron's view was like, well, you know, I want my APL to look like APL and I can kind of create nice, small, neat idioms and I can combine them together. Um, the kind of overall sense I get from listening to a Raycast is a lot of people seem to feel like stringing together four or five functions and operators is perfectly reasonable and normal. And if you go too much past that, it starts to get confusing. So I don't know. I mean, Aaron's like, seems like a particularly smart guy who's particularly good at APL and writes a lot of it. And so it might be just one of these comfort things that 
there's some point at which tacit functions yeah, are easy. One of the benefits of tacit functions is that they're invertible. So you can use um, the negative power operator to, to get their inverse. Um, Roger Hui, who implemented a lot of dialogue, um, uh, apparently he preferred defunds and a lot of the, um, the, the faster idiomatic versions in APL are only faster if you use defunds. Um, uh, okay, so for me, it's more like entirely reference, I guess. Yeah, mostly. But the reason I wanted to do it was just to test my understanding of APL. You know. Gotcha. Um, like I think it's a useful exercise to try, like particularly because I'm really bad at understanding how these things are kind of parsed and strung together. Um, I'm just looking at this now, where where we're post-processing something, and then this is applied dyadically. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Submit. Oh, consider cases like A as a right argument. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a problem. So if you think about the outer product, well, you can see it. You're, um, oh. Why didn't that work? Oh, can't plus slash that, of course. You know, you don't have each of the rows represented there. So yeah, edge cases don't work. Anyway, I feel like we've had a good go at it. Interested to hear what you folks find. It would also probably be an issue with the other approach of like using the key, mm. right? Mm. Like if we were to sort the array and then use key on it, it would mm. probably have a same same mm. issue. Well, you kind of want the left hand side to be, you know, ACGT or something, and then um, no. <laughs> I guess you could look at ACGT check if it's a member of your ants in your string and if it is not then it'll give or i guess i guess i don't know okay so there's slash right which is or was it backslash something where was that thing that was like or was it iota oh where iota underbar is where um um iota under the um if you had just a yeah, no, it still doesn't work. Hmm. So you want to go through each of A, C, G, T. Uh, is it possible to use it just with equals? So A equals, well, C equals A. And I want to do that. Um,
Is this rank? Yeah. I want to do that. For each thing, no, for the whole thing on the right, left, and for each thing on the right. Can you do something like that? Oh, that looks interesting, doesn't it? Um, can, we, can we use epsilon for membership? Kind of A epsilon C? I don't remember if we've covered epsilon or not. Well, I was just thinking, can we just sum this up now? Oh. Um, now, why did that not work? I thought it would. Uh, we've got to be a bit careful when we sum it up. But I think... Um, Gave us the wrong It's rank. very close to correct, right? But I think if we do this, it's correct. So I think what we need to make sure is just that the rank... Um, okay, so... Consider these. Here's the problem. <clears throat> this is a vector. It's not a um, it's not a matrix with one row. So that's interesting. Oh, because that's not a list of characters, right? That's a char that's a character scalar. But that's okay because I would guess that they would actually make it a list containing the single letter A. I guess ideally we'd be able to use. I guess I don't think row works this way, but we would use row to reshape to four columns and in terms of rows, kind of do like the numpy negative one for um, however I, many I, rows. I actually think we've already solved it. I, I actually think, you know, I need to write this to say a list containing the letter A. Oh, would that be the left The problem shoot? is that this is a scalar. Gotcha. So, so I think actually my my test was wrong. So actually I think I think we've got the answer. Um, okay. So I think it's that, and then I think it should be a case of making that into a function. Okay. So we've actually ended up not using any of their <laughs> suggestions, which makes me think that there's a better way to do this, but that's okay. Test. Um, so it looks like the last I would, example. I would say it is this. I think they are treating, they are passing in a, yeah, in the last example, we can see that. Can you put, uh, can we do like an enclosed a left shoe? Is that how you do can it? We just, can we just also just, you could just make it a list, but could you just do like comma and then again, empty string? Oh, just direct comma before it. Oh, uh, look at you. All right. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at you. So yeah, comma turns comma is in list, isn't it? Or Ravel? Is that Ravel? Ravel, I think, yeah. Ravel. Nice one, Tanish. I need a bit better at using comma. I think I end up like using the enclosure too much and then having to like do a bunch of reshapes and then so that's good for me to keep in mind. All right. Perfect. That was fun. That was actually fun. <laughs> it was. Um, the only other thing I'm thinking is like, maybe you will split this. I think this notebook's getting too long, particularly because the kernel's so slow for dialogue. Um, so I might split it into th three. 
being like operators. The first stuff and then operators, and then we'll do an APL competition one. So anyway, look out for that <clears throat> when I send it in. Uh, I won't necessarily do that in a hurry though, because I have a, a course to release. All right. Thanks all. Bye. Have a good one. Bye.